Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, uh, I am Muji. I've come to talk to you a little bit about the growing concerns about uh, that we're having um, as a, the human the human race itself. Actually, first of all, I want to commend uh, the many, many, many beings from all over the world who are working as doctors and nurses and uh, uh, servants. Uh, um, to this um, outbreak of the virus, I know that people are traveling. Some doctors are coming from even from places like Cuba to to join the the, the services in uh, in the hot points of where the virus is most um, prevalent at the moment, like in Italy and so on. I want to take this time to really commend and to say thank you, thank you with one voice from all the people in the, in the world that you are called upon at this moment to be in service in such a profound and global uh, way and uh, i want to say um, thank you to all of you who are really giving everything for all of us and uh, and with such a generosity such selflessness actually that um, I am, I am touched to the core uh, by your love, your compassion, your loyalty uh, to your disciplines, to come in this way, even at great great risk to yourselves. Uh, thank you, thank you, for all of that. Yes. What is pulsating in my entire being today is something that I have never heard of. I think it is unprecedented. I don't think it has ever happened, where the whole world is at home. Only God can do that. The whole world is at home. Doesn't matter where you live, it doesn't matter what time zone you're in, it doesn't matter today whether you are a Muslim or Christian or Hindu, whether you are an atheist or a Buddhist or a Jain or a Rastaman, doesn't matter at all. Today we are one. These times we are one. We are one and we must win also. We are one. Today, we are simply human. Today, we are simply human beings. We have to put aside these superficial differences. Today, we have to put aside the superficial differences. There is um, there's no time for that. We are one, and we must act together and respect each other to cooperate, to take on the same one thing that threatens us all. And I see that that is a great thing. It is a great moment for us. We must not fail. Fear is a very powerful agent, but he was not with us from the beginning. It is not fundamental or original to our nature to be afraid. Love is our nature, and peace, and joy, and uh, an appreciation of what is right and what is good. Uh, these are the qualities, the perfume of our true nature. So, I see that this time, challenging as it is, is also offering us a new path. Uh, not a new, as in necessarily, uh, difficult and strenuous, but a path of grace, a path that only God could have opened for us. Why fear comes is because we have moved away from our central nature. We have been so much uh, impregnated with wrong kind of knowledge, uh, very um, 
negative uh, behavior, mindsets, attitudes, and so on. And we don't actually, or rarely do we have the chance to um, to look at that and to um, investigate that in a way that could lead to a profound change. It's only in situations like this, where we are compelled to pay attention, that we stand the chance of really looking more deeply towards ourselves. Mostly, our attention in life is on the outward going momentum, going towards the sense objects, going towards things which are momentary in their nature, uh, material things, things to do with our egos and fear also. Fear is strongly behind uh, that kind of uh, movement. Fear of being without, fear of being disrespected, fear of being abandoned, fear of um, uh, being at the bottom end of society, all kinds of things. Fear of being attacked, fear of becoming sick, fear of dying, all these things uh, we have in some way uh, uh, been infused or imbued inside our nature. We don't realize it because it's coming from every direction normally. And so I feel that over time, the human soul has become, I would say, toxic with uh, so much uh, negativity. And uh, now I would say. Uh, that it is a beautiful opportunity to begin to change or to um, what is the word I'll look for now? Uh, to um, to wake up is not a bad word. To wake up, to discover what is real about us, what is true, and what is here, because I want to tell you, I feel I, I have got good news for you, in spite of the way I've started talking like this, it's only because I've got great news uh, to share with you in this respect. And that is that, uh, mm, uh, that within you, in your pure nature, which I hope to help and direct you and guide you to discover that, even today, there is a place of real stillness and peace, a depth and uh, a beauty that is far and beyond uh, the world of uh, fearfulness and uh, insecurities and all the ailments that really trouble um, our species, human beings today. Uh, I remember when my own master, my spiritual master Papaji, was once um, asked by someone. Uh, he said, Papaji, the world seems to be mankind. He said, it, it, it seems to be um, on a on a uh, a path to self destruction or something. You know, what can what must happen? What must man do? And uh, the master responded. He said, mankind must become kind man. And that was very very. It was so powerful to hear that. Mankind must become kind man. What is kind man? Kind man means to become himself again, to find his real nature, to find his real spirit and being. And where is this real spirit and being? Right here. It is right here in the heart of our existence, in the heart of our being. It is just through somehow bad habits, misconceptions, uh, the junk food, mental junk food, actually, uh, that has in some way misdirected our attention and put us on a path that eventually made us feel alien from, our, from the pure strength, the pure stability and solidity of the true life of a human being. What I want to tell you today is that your true nature is not lost. It is not somewhere else in some divine vault away from you. It is right here in the very core of your heart. And I want to tell you something else, that you need not be afraid, because the path of self-discovery is not 
strenuous is not difficult. In fact, with a situation being as challenging as it is today, I feel that nature, life, God is offering us an opportunity, actually, to go within. Because mostly our energies have been going outward. It has to go heartward. And the way of that is through some simple guiding will reveal, and I say reveal rather than create. And that should be good news for you, because if I had to say to you that you have to be creative in this, many of you would say, I don't think I have the confidence or the ability to create. But what I'm saying is that what is pure in you is intact already. It only needs to be recognized or discovered again, and you'll find that you are already one with that. What it really uh, amounts to is the loss of um, this tendency to hemorrhage energy, meaning to waste energy pursuing the wind or pursuing things which are of no real value. What I would say to you is that as you discover more and more, you will fall in love with what you are discovering. It will make you much more stable. And that fundamental discovery, I would say, is the most important discovery in the human kingdom. It's not that uh, you know, it's going to be so strenuous, so heavy, we have to do so many things to change. Uh, actually, this is another uh, um, thing I want to tell you about grace, that the grace that comes from God, from life, from God, helps us uh, not because we deserve, so to speak, but because God is great, and the love of God serves every living being. So grace is uh, here to guide us uh, through difficult times. In one part, I remember now, even from uh, the Bible, in, uh, uh, in the Psalm of David, he, I think it was called the Lord's Prayer, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will not be afraid of evil, knowing you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It continues, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. All over the world, particularly in Christendom, we know this prayer. This prayer existed even before the time of Jesus. It's an ancient prayer. Even though it says, I walk to the valley of the shadows of death, not of death, because in reality, I tell you something that may sound very, very new to you. What you are in reality cannot die. I'm going to say this again. Who and what you are, not personally, because the person we take ourselves to be is simply a mask worn in front of the reality we truly are. And now is a time to discover these things, I want you to know. The guided meditations is really showing you where you are most alive, in the most complete sense, and in an experiential way. I am not here to share with you beliefs and philosophies, and not even scriptures, actually, but to guide you in a living way, in an experiential way, that you will come to a discovery and a knowing and that will bring great peace into your mind and heart, and a great um, encouragement to all peoples of every time, uh, that you may not be afraid. Um, as I said before, fear has its role, it has its place, but it has been given too much of a central place. And we must have the courage to face what comes. Fear is not um, attached to this situation. Fear is a response that comes from our um, not being centred inside our own being. And so I want to, 
to guide you to the experience, the knowing of who you really are within yourself. And so I pray in my from my heart that each one will grow inwardly, that even after this virus that comes under control or is stopped, that even after that moment we continue to grow inwardly and outwardly, to grow in understanding, and so that we don't take things for granted, we don't go back to what we have transcended. So I am putting, I'm using the word transcended because I feel this is a moment also in, in our history where we stand a good chance collectively of transcending the lower energies that we have lived with and to come to a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of life in the true sense. And by life, I mean a life of understanding, of gratitude and appreciation, both for your life, the life of your family, the life of your town or village, of your country, of your planet. That we see with more a unitive sense, a harmonious sense, that we are one family, one family, one world, one species, living together with greater um, understanding, greater love. And listen, we can do it. And we are being given a chance uh, by God, through nature, to step up. We have a lot of support for this, a lot of encouragement. I bless you, bless you, everyone, each and every one, that, um, because all our brothers and sisters to myself, I love you. Let's grow more and more in this love uh, for each other. That love is becomes our climate. Let it be so. And God bless you that uh, this coronavirus will do its work, but come to an end. And we will continue to grow as human beings. And indeed, maybe even come to create a very wonderful world. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.